Um, do you uh, do you think OnlyFans and girls being able to do what they want is empowering? Is it empowering for you, Miss Saudi Arabia? It's very empowering. Okay. Uh, why is yes. it empowering? I am Haram. very proud of myself. Haram. 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 Okay. Uh, exactly, exactly. Because I'm just breaking all these cycles from forbidding stuff. And I girls shouldn't do this. And mm -hmm. girls shouldn't do that. Mm -hmm. And I think every girl has the freedom to do whatever she wants. And I don't think... Any guy has the right Haram! to judge. Okay. <laughs> That's right. not Yo. funny. What about this Muslim man asks this OnlyFans model Saudi girl if she finds it empowering for her to be an OnlyFans. And she answers yes. The way this question is asked in the show is in a way that is suggests that there is one answer to this question. But obviously it depends. Not everyone is the same and every individual has to deal with their own background, circumstances, life choices, the things that they're forced into, the things that they make out of their own free will, their family pressure, societal pressure. And I often find people from both sides of these camps to give generalized answers and say yes it's empowering or no it's not empowering. Keep in mind that a job could be a job without it having to be empowering. But when it comes to this Saudi girl, given the shame culture, the modesty culture, the honor culture that she comes from and the level of disgust and shame she had to deal with and the fact that she herself says that she finds it empowering. I find the only people who deserve shame here is not her being an OnlyFans but the people who are dismissing her honest answer and refusing to accept the fact that she finds it empowering. Imagine the journey that she had to go through, the amount of guilt and shame that she, have, she had to claw herself out of to be able to be in a position after all the pressure from both her country, her society, her community and her family, the amount of hardship, emotional pressure that she had to overcome to be able to accept herself the way she is and the way and to be sexual the way that she wants. She should feel nothing but pride. Again, we don't have to make this job to seem like it has more respect or empowerment that it actually has for a lot of women, but for her at least, this is something worthy of pride. And the fact that these scumbags here on this show take her through the same shame and self-disgust that her community had betrayed her with. They are the people that deserve the shame, not her. They, she doesn't deserve to be shamed. The people who are trying to make her feel disgusted by her choices and by expressing her sexuality that is for her to share or enjoy or keep to herself or not as she wishes, as anyone wishes. For most of us, actually, there's no pride in that because we didn't have to go through the barriers of shame that she had to go through but for her there is a lot of pride there's a lot of empowerment Woo! Woo -hoo! yes the only saudi bikini model you go girl boss babe you go get you some and there's all these girls around them who are dressed up disgustingly because that's the only thing they have to offer and they are there like whoa the first saudi bikini girl whoa what, what is a bikini let's let's analyze what's a bikini bikini is underwear it's just given another name it's like for example a strip club they call it gentleman's club giving it another name doesn't take away from the fact of how disgusting it is so you walking around or anybody by the way anyone can walk how they want bikini is exactly the same thing as a woman wearing underwear there is no such there's no difference it's just called a bikini. Oh, I'm in a bikini. No, you are in a underwear. You're walking around in your underwear. And not only that, what did you do? Only fans. Woo, go get you some girl. Do whatever you like on there, you know. Let men just use you, abuse you like a piece of meat. Which studies show that when men see women in bikini, the part of the brain that lights up for two use. Meaning you're like a screwdriver to them. You're like something that's an inanimate object. You're not even a human being in their eyes. But it's okay, sister. You left that for the freedom of the West. Woo.
Let's carry on. Like a screwdriver? I don't understand these objectifying comments people make when you are enjoying someone sexually. Last time I checked, people are not turned on by meat or screwdrivers or any other objects. They seem to be mostly turned on by other humans. Mostly. So to be turned on by or sexually attracted to another human, you are doing the opposite of objectifying them. Because they need to be human for you to be turned on by them. If they were objects, you wouldn't be turned on by them. I find it very interesting how women don't want consequences for poor decisions. If you sexualize yourself as a woman, Nine out of ten times, every man you deal with is going to sexualize you as well in reciprocation. A man cannot sexualize you or, or uh, how do I say this, um, objectify you unless you objectify yourself first. Correct. That's the reality. So Correct. you're saying society, you know, does these things and constricts women's sexuality, whatever. What if it's to protect them? And the reason why it's to protect them is to keep men from giving them the evil eye and objectifying them and looking them at nothing more hmm. than a sexual object. You can expect consequences for decisions first of all it's not necessarily a poor decision just because people like you people who want to make women feel disgusted for just expressing themselves the, the way they like or to share their sexuality to the people they want for whatever gains they wish we can't expect consequences. They do expect consequences from people like you. That doesn't mean that they can't talk about it. Just because there is a response to scums like you. Just because you who make life difficult for people who just want to be free. That doesn't mean they haven't expected it. They have been expecting it all their lives. They have been dealing with scums like you all their lives. Of course they expect consequences to the actions they take. You think just because there's a pushback to scums like you that they didn't expect scums like you? Also men are not encouraging modesty culture to protect women. They are trying to promote modesty culture to own woman. And lastly, the nothing more than a sexualized object comment. That's another idiotic comment that people often make. When you enjoy someone sexually, whether they're a man or a woman, it doesn't mean that that's their only worth. It's an additional worth to everything else they have to offer. It's a positive, it's, it's beautiful, it's enjoyable, it's life enriching when you or anyone else is being seen as sexy, not exclusively sexy, but sexy on top of everything else that you are, on top of everything else you have to offer. Depending on where your mindset is in the moment, if you need that for your self-confidence and if that isn't what's what? empowering you and helping you, Okay. Yeah. There, there. If there, if there are women who have been disrespected and told their whole life that they're, se if mm -hmm. there are women who have been disrespected their entire life and told That's that their true. sexuality is something that That's they should true. be ashamed of, but they find the freedom to project all of that to the world and Go they're queen. able to release that to the world and 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 disarm themselves of the shame of their natural sexuality and their bodies and be completely proud of just who they are amen absolutely oh, trust me, they're gonna re release all right yeah they release some okay, nuts so, uh, so you're yeah, saying and that that's fine and that's fine but you know what and, and that's and, and that's fine because at the end of the day you don't know what someone has been through to be able to allow them to reach the point where they're confident enough to show their bodies to the world and they don't care that the internet is forever that's true you know, you don't know what someone has been through to come to the point to say, you know what, I'm not ashamed of this. And you don't know if they're looking for someone who is preferring an almost virgin. Mm -hmm. They might not want a Myron. They might not give two shits if a Myron is looking for them. Myron. Okay. Uh, okay. Myron. Myron. Yeah. Right? Okay. So at the end of the day, yes, 
I do believe that it can be extremely empowering. And it just depends on who you are and where you're coming from and what you've been through and what you've had to go through to get to the point where you say, you know what, this is me and I accept it and I love it and I'm comfortable with it. And I'm proud. So Allah, brothers and sisters, when you turn your back on Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and you try to please the creation, Wallahi, the creation will never be happy with you. Allah will never be happy with you. The angels will be never happy with you. And this is what we see. Look how uncomfortable she is. Haram, yeah, I'm proud, I'm proud of myself. I'm empowering. What is empowering about you dressing in an appropriate way, in modest way, and there are men masturbating over you around the world, envisioning you in God knows what and masturbating over you. Your family wants the best for you. Your family cares about you, that they don't want you to fall for this pit of disgusting scum lifestyle. And you are here doing that. Why on earth would you come on a show with your breasts hanging out? Why? Why do you have to make your breasts hang out? I'm uncurious. Why? Why mini skirts? Why? Girl's leaving. She's emotional. Um, Miss uh, Haram. <laughs> so get her out. All right, yeah, just uh, make it quick. Then we don't got to make it a whole, uh, you know, okay. thing. Just let her get her stuff, and y'all y'all could escort her Haram! out. Haram. And take her Instagram off the thing too. Yeah. Shorty's crying. Probably. Yeah. But... And here's the thing: that's sexual like empowerment for you. Yep. When when you can't speak her. about what you do openly, and you you feel a certain way, it, it goes back to the biology, man. Women know deep down that yo. It, this is not acceptable for me to be doing this shit. Like I said, these people are scum. Scum. And this girl who has fled all that shame, all that sense of unworthiness, all that guilt, and has left a community, a society, a country, a family that has betrayed her, that was supposed to love her and protect her. And she has put that behind her and come to a place that is hopefully more accepting of her and even here you find disgusting men like this guy who weaponize her insecurities and act like they're doing it to protect her but this is nothing but men's desire to control women this is some men's insecurities fearing that they will lose control when women get to choose and they are right they do lose control when a woman gets to choose her own destiny are, are you from a Muslim country? Are you Muslim? Yes. You are Muslim. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You are practicing Muslim. I'm a, I'm a crappy Muslim. Haram! Haram! No. That? Haram. Haram. Are, you, are you a practicing Muslim? Haram! Well, I could do better. Haram! Okay, so, but then you should understand mm -hmm. the amount of pressure and the amount of stigma that comes behind just a woman even showing her hair and the majority of her face and her ankles and her body in certain countries. Did you, did you? I don't have to be Muslim to know that Saudi every religion, religion has, has practiced okay. female modesty. But this is not religion. This is country. This is culture. This is everything that she's, you know, grown up. With so what are the chances that every culture on the face of the planet uh, uh, practices female modesty? Yeah. There's a reason for that. The Think about that for a second. Think about it. Chinese, all the way to Native Americans, to the, the Islamic world, Christians, etc. They all practice modesty with women, right? But they never met each other, right? Until colonization is everything else like that. But but they all practice female modesty. Why? Because they understood that you got to protect a woman's value. It's a woman's job to preserve a value. It's a man's job to create his value. Okay. First of all, not all cultures practice modesty with women, but the ones that did, did not do it because they were protecting women for their own sake. They were protecting women as their property. They were protecting their control over women against other men. A woman's sexuality is part of her worth. And if you as an individual have control over your own worth, then you have control over what you have to offer and you have control over your own life. The promotion of modesty culture transfers that power to the husband, the father, the uncle, or the brother, away from the individual, away from the woman. It takes away your ability to choose your own destiny. That is what modesty culture protects. It protects men's ownership over women. Now, there is nothing wrong with modesty. 
there is something wrong with modesty culture because modesty can be a choice. A woman should be able to decide how much she wants to express or not express her sexuality. Modesty culture, on the other hand, makes that decision for you. It imposes it on you. If you want me to cover more topics like this, please like the video so that I know that there is a demand for it. Liking, commenting, hitting the bell notification and the subscribe button really helps the channel grow. And it doesn't cost you a single penny. So please make sure that you like the video before you leave. I've been your host, Armin Navabi. This has been The Secular Jihadist. See you in the next video.